Hello, this is Mrs. Ward, and I'm going to go over graphs of polar equations. Uh, we're going to talk about graphing polar equations by plotting points, using symmetry to sketch the graphs of polar equations, uh, talking about how and when we use the zeros and maximum radius values to sketch graphs of polar equations, and then talk about special polar equations. So let's go back to when Algebra 1, when you first learned how the graph equations functions, we taught you to make a table where you had an x and a y, and the x was your input value, the y was your output value. You pick numbers for x, and then you solve for y. So when we do polar equations, it's kind of like we're going right back to there, except for now instead of having an x and a y, we are going to have an, a theta and an r. So we are going to um, plot in, we're going to, the theta is going to be our input value, so we're going to substitute in theta and then solve for r. So if I have theta is equal to 0, my equation here is r is equal to negative 4 times the sine of theta. I'm going to substitute in 0 for theta. The sine of 0 is 0. Negative 4 times 0 will be 0. I'm going to do negative 4 times the sine of pi over 6. Well, the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. So negative 4 times 1 half will be negative 2. I'm going to keep on going through this pattern. So I'm going to say negative 4 times the sine of pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. Negative 4 times that will be negative 2 times the square root of 3. Pi over 2 will be negative 4 times the sine of pi over 2. Well, the sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this will be negative 4. 2 pi over 3 my sine is still 2 thirds, so it'll be negative 2 times the square root of 3. 5 pi over 6, my sine is still 1 half, so negative 4 times 1 half will be negative 2. The sine of pi, so negative 4 times the sine of pi, well, the sine of pi is 0, so this will end up being 0. Now, here when I get to 7 pi over 6, my sine is negative, so this will be negative 4 times the sine of 7 pi over 6, well, that's going to be a negative 1 half. So negative 4 times a negative 1 half will give me a positive 2. 3 pi over 2, the sine, this is negative 4 times the sine of 3 pi over 2. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So negative 4 times negative 1 will be a positive 4. 11 pi over 6 is going to be the same negative 1 half, so it's going to be the same answer here. And then 2 pi puts me right back here, which was 0, so that's going to be 0. And remember, the period for sine was 2 pi. So now when I go from 0 to 2 pi, those are all my values. After 2 pi, every time I keep on adding, I'm just going to repeat what I had before. So to graph this, I'm going to just plot those points. Whoopsie, I have part of my graph left over from before, so let me get rid of that. So... I'm going to start with 0, 0. Well, my radius, my angle is 0, which would be right here. That's 0 degrees. And the radius is 0, so that means I'm going to put a point right here. And in polar coordinate systems, that's called the pole. Instead of being the origin of Cartesian coordinate system, it's going to be the pole in the polar system. Then I'm going to have pi over 6. Well, here's pi over 6. And my radius is negative 2, which means I hop over that pole and continue on that line, and I'm going to go two units down. So that will be pi over 6, negative 2. Here's pi over 3, and my radius is negative 2 times the square root of 3, which as a decimal is about negative 3.5, negative 3.46, something like that. So I'm going to hop over my pole, 1, 2, 3, and a half. Then pi over 2 is negative 4, so hopping over the pole, 1, 2, 3, 4. 2 pi over 3, so here's 2 pi over 3. It's going to be that negative 3.5, so hopping over the pole. 5 pi over 6, so here's 5 pi over 6. Hopping over the pole for negative 2, I'm going to plot right there. Then I skip to 3 pi over 2, which is this angle here, and I want 4, and I already have a, 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 plot, a point plotted there. 11 pi over 6 is here. And I want the radius to be 2. I already have a dot there. And then 2 pi will be 0. So I'm going to get something that looks like this. And you can graph this on your calculator to get a better idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, you have to be in polar equations to graph that. 
All right, so let's talk about symmetry. Symmetry means when the one side looks like the other. So you have three types of symmetry for polar graphs. One is in with respect to the line theta is equal to pi over 2. So theta is equal to pi over 2 would be this line right here. So you're reflecting from the left to the right. That would be reflect, that's symmetry over the line theta is equal to pi over 2. Symmetrical over respect to the polar axis. This is my polar axis, which means the top half of my graph looks like the bottom half of my graph. And finally, the last way we can be symmetrical is with respect to the pole. Remember, this is a pole, what we used to call the origin, which means that the first quadrant and the third quadrant look like. And if I had something over here in the second, it would be mirrored down here to the fourth. So those are my two types of symmetry. What you should know is that the sine curve is always going to be reflective over the line theta is equal to pi over 2. So sine theta pi over 2. So if I am graphing sine of theta, whatever I put in the first quadrant, I'm going to mirror over and put it in the second quadrant. Whatever I put in the third quadrant, I'm going to mirror over. I'm sorry, fourth quadrant, I'm going to mirror over and put in the third quadrant. So when I plot points for a sine curve, I only need points from the first and the fourth quadrant. And then I can mirror over to get the second and the third. Cosine is reflective over the polar axis. So here's cosine. Here's my polar axis. So whatever happens in the first is going to happen in the fourth. Whatever happens in the second is going to happen in the third. So the graph cosine, I need to only plot points from the first and the second quadrant. So if we go back to this graph here that we just did. Oops, see one more. This was a sine curve. So really, I only needed to graph points from the first and the fourth quadrant, and then I would have mirrored. If you look at this graph, which I don't know if I can do. If I were to draw a line over the line theta is equal to pi over 2, the left side of the graph and the right side of the graph would look exactly like each other. So moving on to um, graphing another one using this fact. So I have a cosine graph. I have 3 minus 2 cosine. So you'll notice I have taken my chart and I've shrunk it because cosine reflects over the polar axis. So it flex over the polar axis, which means I only need points for my first and my second quadrant. And then to get to the third and the fourth, I'm just going to mirror those over. So here I have zero, and I'm going to substitute these back in. And I already did that work, so I'm taking 3 minus 2 times the cosine of theta. And when I do that, I end up getting 1. And here are my values. So 0 is 1, so 0, radius of 1 then I can't mirror that because it's right on the polar axis. Pi over 6 ended up being 3 minus the square root of 3, which is about 1.3. Then I'm going to automatically mirror that over the polar axis and draw another point right down here in the fourth quadrant to, to mimic that one. Pi over 3, 1, 2. So I'm going to mirror down to the fourth quadrant and put another point at right there. At pi over 2, I'm going to get 3, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to mirror to down here and draw another one right there. So I'm only plotting, I'm only figuring out the values for this, and I'm mirroring them over to here. Okay, uh, 5 pi over 6 <clears throat> is, <clears throat> I'm sorry, 2 pi over 3 is 4. Mirroring down. 5 pi over 6 is about 4.7, so about there-ish, mirroring down, and then pi is 5. So I'm going to get a graph that looks something like this. And notice I only plot the points from the top half and mirror down to do the bottom half, and that's how you use symmetry to make graphing a little bit easier. So let's talk about zeros and maximum values. So if I have this equation where r is equal to 1 plus 2 sine theta, if I want to find the zeros, that's all I'm going to do is put 0 in for r and solve 1 plus 2 sine theta. So I'm going to get negative 1 is equal to 2 sine theta. Divide both sides by 2. And I'm asking myself, when is the sine equal to negative 1 half? 
So remembering my unit circle, I know the sine is equal to negative one half. It's going to be from the third or the fourth quadrant. It's going to have a denominator of six, so it's going to be seven pi over six or eleven pi over six. And that's what theta is going to equal. So that's the first part. Those are going to be my my zeros. To find my max values, I'm going to the, I'm going to ask myself, when is my sign at its maximum value? Well, my sign is at its max. The most that sign can be is 1. That's Remember, sign fluctuates between 1 and negative 1. So I like to find both because of negative signs and all that. I just do both. So the sign of theta is equal to 1 when theta is equal to pi over 2. The sine of theta is equal to its lowest point, which is negative 1, when theta is equal to 3 pi over 2. So the, the most, so if I put pi over 2 in here for theta, I'm going to have 1 plus 2 times the sine of pi over 2. And when I do that, that's going to be 1 plus 2 times 1. So that'll be 3. If I do this 3 pi over 2, I'm going to have 1 plus 2 times the sine of 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to have 1 plus 2 times negative 1. So this will be negative 1. Since 3 is the highest, this will be my maximum value. Since negative 1 is the lowest, that will be my minimum value. And that's all you have to do to find the min and the max, is you have to just substitute it in uh, the, the maximum value for sine or cosine. So That'll be 3 pi over 2, so, so that'll be pi over 2, so my max will be 3, it'll occur at pi, at pi over 2. My min will be negative 1, that'll occur at 3 pi over 2. So the reason why I talk about max and mins is because we're going to talk about a special curve, which is called the rose curve. And the rose curve is called the rose curve because it's supposed to look like roses. So a rose curve always comes in the form of your radius is equal to a constant in either cosine or sine, and then you have a number here and theta. So I can have r is equal to 4 cosine 3 theta. That would be an example of a rose curve. There's no plus signs. There's no minus signs. It's just the numbers in either sine or cosine. And there's some things that are very unique about a rose curve. First of all, if I look at this number here, which is my n, the number that's in between this trig function and the theta tells me how many petals I have. So here, my n is 3, and I have 3 petals. Here, my n is 4, and I have 8 petals. Here, my n is 5, and I have 5 petals. Here, my n is 2, and I have 2 petals. So the rule for this is if n is odd, then n is equal to the number of petals. Well, that's easy. If n is even, then you have to take 2 times n to get the number of petals. So in this case here that I did here, my n would be 3, so I would have 3 petals. If I did another one where, let's say, I, let's switch colors so you know it's a different one. Let's say I said r was equal to uh, 5 sine 4 theta. Since n is even, that means I'm going to have 8 petals. And that helps me graph this. So all I have to do to graph a rose curve, curve is I have to figure out how many petals it has, and I have to find the first spot that I either hit a max or a min. So let's go through one very slowly and then we'll pick up speed. So here I have r is equal to 4 cosine 2 theta. So the first thing I know is that this n is 2, it's even, which means I'm going to have 4 petals. What's nice about these petals is that they are evenly spaced apart. So if I have 2 pi, and I divide it by 4, and 2 pi is all the way around the unit circle. If I have 2 pi and divide it by 4, that means my petals are going to be pi over 2 apart. If you don't like radians, then you're going to take 360 degrees, and you're going to divide it by 4, and you're going to say that your petals are 90 degrees apart. Whatever makes you happy. Then I'm going to have to find my max and my min and when those occur. So this is a cosine function. Cosine... So cosine 
2 theta, the max that a cosine function can be is 1. The, so that's the most that a cosine function can be. Cosine is equal to 1 here at 0, and that happens at 0, and then I'm going to write 2 pi. So this, what I put in here for cosine, so this 2 theta, I'm going to write that down here, 2 theta is equal to 0, or 2 theta is equal to 2 pi, because those are the two places that the cosine is equal to 1. Well, if I divide both sides by 2, I'm going to get 0. If I divide both sides by 2, I'm going to get pi. So I hit my max at 0 or pi. Okay. Um, if I wanted to do the min, we'll talk about the min later. So I have my max at 0 and pi. What is my max? Well, the most that this whole thing can be, the most that this whole thing can be is 1. So if I take 4 times 1, the most that this is going to be is 4. So I'm going to have a max of 4. And I just said that that occurred at 0. So one order pair is going to be 0, 4, 0. And the other order pair is going to be 4, pi. I got those from my when my max occurs and what my max is. So I'm going to graph 4, 0. So my radius is 4, my angle 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, put a dot there. And then my angle's pi, my radius is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have those two dots there. Well, knowing that my pedals are pi over 2 or 90 degrees apart, that means I have to have a pedal. If I have a pedal here, I'm going to go 90 degrees or pi over 2, and I'm going to have to have another pedal there. This is also 90 degrees or pi over 2, 90 degrees or pi over 2. I now have four maximum values, which are the tips of my pedals. So then I'm going to sketch it. Whoopsie, poorly sketched. And I'm going to sketch my rose curve just by con connecting my, my pedals, the tips of my pedals together. So I feel like I talked really fast, so let's try and do another one. And these are the only ones that we're going to expect you to be able to graph by hand. So here I have r is equal to 3 sine 2 theta. So again, even. So I'm going to have four petals. Just like before, I'm going to take 2 pi and divide it by 4 and say that my petals are pi over 2 apart. Or I'm going to say 360 degrees divided by 4 and my petals are 90 degrees apart. Either one works. Then let's talk about the max. The max that sine can be, the max that sine can be is this, the most that this can ever be is 1. So the max would be 3 times 1, so my max is going to be 3. That occurs when this whole thing is equal to 1. That occurs when that whole thing is equal to 1. So now I'm asking myself, when is the sine of theta equal to 1? And you say, well, normally the sine of theta is equal to 1 at pi over 2. So I'm saying 2 theta is equal to pi over 2. So now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 or multiply by 1 half, and I get theta is equal to pi over 4. So I'm going to plot that one point where my radius is 3 and my, my angle is pi over 4. So at pi over 4, 1, 2, 3. That's all the information I need to know. I have one point, and I know my angles are 90 degrees or pi over 2 apart. Well, on this graph, one, so 1, 2, then, so I'm going to put one here, because this is, yes, 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 yes. Put one there, put one there, put one there. And so now to sketch my rose curve, I'm doing my petals. And that's my rose curve. Okay, let's try one more. These are extra. I don't think you have these on your note sheets, but you can just watch me. So here, my cosine is 3 theta. So this is odd. This is the first one that we've had that's odd. So it's odd. So that means there are three petals. It's the same number as what's here. You don't have to multiply. So I'm taking 2 pi and dividing it by 3. So they're either 2 pi over 3 apart 
or if I take 360 degrees and divide it by 3, they're 120 degrees apart. Here's the hint. See this number here? That's your max because the most that this can ever be is 1. So my max is going to be 1. I'm sorry, my max is going to be 3. And that's going to happen cosine 3 theta is equal to 1. So then ask yourself, well, when is the cosine equal to 1? And that usually happens as 0 or 2 pi. And I like doing both if I can, so I'm going to do both. So then I'm going to take this 3 theta and set it equal to 0. This 3 theta is set equal to 2 pi. Divide by 3. So here theta is equal to 0. Here theta is equal to 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to plot a point at 3, 0. 1, 2, 3, 0. Then I'm going to plot another point at 3, 2 pi over 3. So here's 2 pi over 3, 1, 2, 3. And now I need my third point. Well, it needs to be, this tells you how many units apart they are. So I can take my last, so 0 plus 2 pi over 3 was that 2 pi over 3, right? Then if I want to find my third angle, and I only need one more, right, because there's only three petals, I'm going to add 2 pi over 3 again. So 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3, which is here, and that's going to be my last tip of my petal, and there's my petals. Three petals, maximum three value, and that happens at zero and pi, two pi over three in this case, and four pi over three. I don't think, I think I have one more. Nope, I don't. So that's it. That's all I have for you. Uh, if you have any questions, email us, and best of luck.